Welcome to your Ultima Life Podcast, where we help you break free from mediocrity and create a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. Get your free video series at yourultimatelife.ca. Hey there, welcome to Your Ultimate Life. Welcome to this show. I am so excited today. I get to talk about one of my favorite things in the world. Now, if I could give you two things, if I could give you two things, it would be a true view of who you are and optimism. Optimism optimism is one of the things that I would give you if I could give you the most valuable thing in the universe or one of the most valuable things. And a true view, a true understanding, a deep knowledge of who you are would be the other. Now, who you really are, we've talked about that other shows, and we will again. I love this picture. I hope you're watching the video because there's this picture behind me of a beautiful sunset. It could be a sunrise, but I think it's a sunset. And some water in between some beautiful trees and the sunlight is coloring the trees orange and everything. And then behind me, this this looks like a river, maybe. Maybe it's the end of a lake. But anyway, there's a stack of rocks, a great big rock on the bottom. And then and it's a round rock. And then they stack up a little higher. And there looks like there's four, maybe one under the water, five rocks stacked up in a you know, kind of an altar like thing, except the top rock is too high and too small to be really an altar <clears throat> for anything to be on it. Anyway, when I look at that, what do you think? What do you feel when you see that picture? Well, I'll tell you what I feel. In case you just listened to the audio, I've tried to describe it. It is a peaceful scene. It makes you feel peace. It makes you feel connected. It can make you feel powerful. It can make you feel like things are okay. The world is as it should be. The universe is moving well. Why does a picture like that make us feel that? Well, I don't know all the neurochemistry, but there is a sense of peace, a sense of order. Those rocks are stacked on top of each other that way, and obviously I have no idea how they got there. Somebody put them there. But it would have been a lot of work to do that because at least that first and second rock are going to be quite heavy and probably even the third one. So it took some effort to get that up there. But there's a sense with the colors and the placement and the reflection in the river, which I just moved to the side so you can see it. It's just beautiful. Now, what does that have to do with creating your ultimate life? Well, it turns out a lot. Here's what I know from my own experience, and I want you to think about this. When you are frantic, when your life seems to be overwhelming and moving at a crazy pace, when you have too many demands on your time and too many demands on your heart, how effective are you at working? How, you, how effective are you at producing not just something, but producing your best results? Well, the answer is not. Not ever. And you know that. And I know people who say, oh, they do really good under pressure, and I'm not questioning that. They probably do. but producing that way is very stressful, a lot of stress hormones and a real demand on your spirit and your body. And often in those kind of stressful situations, you're just hoping that it works. You're hoping against hope and powering through doing something difficult. Well, I want to, I want to present a different view. Now, I told you I'd give you two things, and I briefly want to talk about the first one, which is a a real understanding of who you are. We know when we sit quietly, like imagine for a minute you're sitting on the side of this lake or river and you're looking at that stillness, that still water and that stack of rocks with its symmetry and its beauty. Imagine further that you've got nothing else to do, know where you're supposed to be, You're just here. I want you to just close your eyes for a minute, unless you're driving, and listen to my voice. Imagine for a moment you are looking at those rocks or some other still and beautiful scene just like that. And there are no demands on your heart. There's nowhere you're supposed to be. There's nothing you have to do right now. I don't mean ever. Right now, nothing you have to do. 
And you are allowed to just breathe in deeply. So do that right now. Breathe in deeply through your nose. Do it again. Deeply in. Now, if you've participated with me fully, just two breaths like that will slow your heartbeat. It'll lower your blood pressure a couple of points. It will reset your perspective a little or a lot, depending on how frantic you were to start with. There's a couple of reasons to do that. Just that moment, that 30 seconds or 40 seconds of slowing down can teach you a lesson if you want it. And the lesson is this. You have the availability of slowing your perspective and getting back in control of your life in 45 seconds. And you have that anytime you want it. It may not feel like it. It may feel like things are pressing so hard that you can't. But unless you're threatened with a hurricane or imminent death, you have that ability. Now, the other day I saw part of a special that was on TV about tsunamis. Okay, if a hurricane or a tsunami or some other terrifying thing is, is your world right this minute, then yeah, that's different. But often we interpret other events, financial issues, betrayal of someone, even someone dying, as a tsunami, which threatens imminent physical death, and it doesn't. Even in the midst of emotional turmoil, slowing down for a moment is beneficial. Now, our bodies are wired that way. It produces different neurotransmitters and brings us a sense of clarity and calm. Why is that? That has to do with the first thing that I would give you, which is a true understanding of who you are. You're a divine being. The spirit within you was created by the divine, God. That is a fact. You can call the name of that creation whatever you want. You can associate that structure any way you want. But deep inside, you know that that's true. And sometimes we feel like we've been abandoned by that creator. And sometimes we feel like we've made so many mistakes, it's hopeless And sometimes we may feel, well, that's true for somebody else, but not us. None of those negative things are the real truth. It might feel like it for a moment. A way to get back to center is to maybe spend five minutes breathing slowly. You can do box breathing, which is count to four, really slowly breathing in. Hold it for four at the top and then breathe out. And the breathe out usually takes quite a bit longer than four. And I call it box breathing. It is called box breathing. I didn't coin that term because the idea is breathe out four and then hold four at the bottom with empty lungs. So either do that or take eight, a count of eight to breathe out. That frame, breathing in through your nose, holding it, and breathing out slowly, count of eight, or count of four, and then holding it out, it will reset your metabolism. It activates other nervous system elements, and it does things good for you. It reminds you of your true origin and possibility, your divinity. Now, I want you to just answer this question honestly. If every moment of your day you could remember the truth that you're created by God, you're created to succeed, everything you want is within your ability to create. Yes, it takes work, but it's within your ability to create. If you could remember that in every frantic and difficult situation, how big is the difference that it would make? Well, for me, it's enormous. And I can promise you it will be enormous too. So that's why understanding your divinity is the first thing I give you. I talked a little bit longer about that than I meant to, but we'll do that in another episode. 
The second thing I give you is optimism. I titled this episode, Optimism is Oxygen. And I did that first part because it plays into that. Those two are related. If you think you're worthless and you can't do anything and God somehow forgot you, or you were an accident or any of those negative things, it is really difficult to just crank up the optimism button and be, quote, optimistic, right? Yeah, that's hard because there's nothing behind it. It's a phony sort of pretend. I'm not talking about fake it till you make it. So drop that idea. This is not fake it till you make it. It is slowing down enough to reconnect reconnect with a fundamental truth. Here is that fundamental truth. No matter what is going on in your life, or how difficult or depressing or frustrating it seems, there is a way forward. There is a way up, and there is a way out. If you're in the middle and stuck in average land and just kind of settling for mediocrity, there is a way up, there is a way out. There is a way to excellence. There is a way to owning a deep and meaningful life purpose that just stokes your mind every day. There is a way to create the wealth you need to enjoy your life and to serve. There is a way to go from where you are to having absolute joy all day, every day. <clears throat> Now, there may be some of you who listen to this that already feel like you have joy every day, all day. And I'm going to give you a special invitation at the end because I want to meet you and I want to feature your story and your processes here on the show. But anyway, optimism, what is it? Well, it's not fake. It's not Pollyanna looking at things. It's not ignoring the truth. It's not pretending difficulties away. It is a simple choice to believe that what I just said that there's always a way up, there's always a way out. It, some people say glass half full. Uh, I say it more simply, there's got to be a way. There is a way to get through the situation. If, you're ha if you have a bankruptcy, there is, there's got to be a way through that. If you have a business that's failed, there's a way through it. Maybe it's another business. Maybe it's through whatever restructuring needs to happen. Maybe it's through the valley of some hardship and some sacrifice. If a relationship fails and someone has betrayed you, there is a way through this. There is a healthy, positive, powerful way through it. Now, I'm not pretending away the stages of grief and loss, which anger, denial, bargaining, resignation, acceptance, that may be part of the process. But fundamentally, agreeing with yourself, believing, choosing, there is a way that's optimism. The opposite is pe pessimism, where you say, I'm probably screwed. There's no way. I'm dead. It's finished, and so forth. In that um, television special I saw about the tsunami, <clears throat> they interviewed several people from some of the great ones, one in Indonesia many years ago that killed so many people. And there were some people that were there, you know, doing the tourist thing who said, I thought I was dead. I thought I was done. I thought it was over. And yet there they are now, later, giving this interview, and they made it. I'm not, you know, I don't know what else happened, but I'm saying even when we think we're done, we're dead, we're finished, it's over. That's not true. Okay, so an optimism is a choice to accept that fact. There's a way through. There's a way out. There's a way up. Now, sometimes what I used to do is I say, okay, that's fine. There's a way out and there's a way up, but it means that I'm stumbling along. I'll never do anything better, you know, et cetera. And usually that was combined with a bunch of self-loathing, which went like this. I've already screwed myself. I'm no good. I've made all these mistakes. Everybody hates me. You know, I've ruined my life and that sort of conversation which is something we say emotionally when something terrible strikes us, financially or in a relationship situation, or when we've made really serious mistakes. The truth is that's how it feels right then. 
The other truth is there is a way up and there is a way out. So that's what optimism is. And the reason I say it's oxygen is because, you know, we can live for days without food, weeks without food, days without water, and just a few minutes without oxygen before we get brain damage and we're permanently toast. Optimism is like that. You can survive for a very short time with a totally dark point of view. No optimism, pessimism, assuming you're screwed. If you live there very long, it will damage you. The neurotransmitter cocktail that comes with a negative view of stuff is poison. It's corrosive. It shortens your life. It destroys your creativity. It literally makes us stupid. We can't think straight. We can't find ways through. So living in a place of negativity for very long isn't helpful. So what do you do? Well, this the questions that matter right now is, okay, how, how do I get it? If optimism is like oxygen, Kellen, if, if that's true what you're saying, and I'm telling you that it is, what do I do? How do I get it? So let's spend the rest of this episode talking about different ways that you can go from a disaster to something positive. How do you get optimism? So let me tell you some stories about people that I know, and some of them are about me. But these are people who have been in a disastrous situation. So I have a friend who was in a situation where they were considering, you know, that maybe the world would be better off without them. That driving down the freeway, maybe they should just drive into a concrete pillar at high speed because, you know, their family and others would be better off without them. That individual today is optimistic, powerful, and in the midst of creating a very, very successful company that's going to be worth staggering sums, at least nine and even perhaps 10 figures. So <clears throat> how did that happen? That person made two choices. One, to not drive into a pillar, not because they had a flash of light or some magical thing happened, but just you know what? I'm just not going to do that. It would be disappointing. Maybe it's really cowardly. I'm not going to do that. So that was the first thing. And the second thing was, I'm going to keep trying. Not, I'm going to keep trying. Oh, but you know what? I'm going to keep trying. That was a spark of optimism. Even the tonality of, I'm going to keep trying. Uh -uh. And what was that look like? What did that look like? Well, they ended up spending some time talking to their mate about this particular situation. They went and talked to other folks, religious folks. They talked, they, they got a coach. They talked, they, they were willing to be vulnerable and talk about this and then take action on the conversation. There's not a lot of good that comes if you just talk about something and complain. And we've all been in situations where maybe we, maybe you, maybe me, or others are there just to bitch and get, you're right, the world is so terrible, they all suck. There's not a lot of benefit from that. But if you go to a place where you expect to be listened to fully and completely, and then you expect to get and listen to yourself, some feedback about possibilities. Not a bunch of you need to do this and you should do that. Forget that. But just some feedback and possibilities. Now, those two things went hand in hand. One, I'm not going to end it. And two, I'm, I am going to keep going. There's got to be something. And then taking actions to go find the something and being open to that. So that finding something, it could be a therapist. I've done a lot of that. It could be a coach. It could be both. I've done all of those things. It could be a spouse or mate. I've done that also, depending on your situation. But the key that is important is to go, don't, don't swim and spiral inside yourself, because that is a recipe to spiral down and out. Okay, so that's one way to get optimism. Another way to get optimism is to end isolation. Okay, the COVID that we just had a few years ago now 
was very isolating and it you know increased L instances of mental illness and people struggling and feeling that isolation and all that sort of thing i am on a platform online called lunch club and have been for a few years and it's fun i've had as many as three meetings a week i, I do less than that now one a week but i get to, i got to meet people all over the world and one of the questions i always ask and i've now had uh, 400 and something people 400 and something people i've met from all over the world people from um turkey and south america and north america of course and america and u.s sorry american u.s same thing canada and just all over the place and i met one from moscow and one from uh was it azerbaijan anyway all over the all over the world several from india and <clears throat> just tons of people now what does that have to do with optimism? You know what I ask? I always ask, why are you on Lunch Club? And I ask it for two reasons. One, I, I've read their bio. You put a little bio in and so forth, so I know what they do. But my question is, why are you on Lunch Club? And you could be thinking, well, they're doing it to you know, network and find clients. You know what most people said? I'm doing it just to meet people. I'm doing it because I want to reach out. I want to enlarge my circle. I want to see different people from all over the place. Manny mentioned COVID. You know, COVID was so isolating, I just wanted to reach out. Now, isn't that interesting? This wasn't therapy and this wasn't anything like that. It was just the human need that we have to connect. So there is another thing that you can do to create optimism. Now, if you go places where everybody's bitching and moaning, then that's not very optimistic. But if you go there intending to find hope and optimism, you can do that. There are hundreds, thousands, even millions of meetup groups and so forth, where you can do both. You can network for business and you can meet people. This does mean you have to make a choice to put yourself out there and to be connected and visit with people. If that's a scary thing for you, then there's another piece of help, which is learn how to network, learn how to, and here's the biggest key, learn how to love yourself so you can entertain the possibility that there are people who do want to meet you and would like to talk to you and would enjoy a conversation. There are so many online platforms that are not dating or any kind of entanglement that are just designed for people to connect and chat in positive ways. And Lunch Club's one I use, but there are others. So that's another place to create optimism. The most powerful thing that I've done to create optimism is some is the personal development work. I've read I don't know how many hundred books, but reading the books didn't help. The most important thing was to go back to that first thing that I said I'd give you, which was get a true view of myself. Realize, choose to believe that I'm a I'm a son of God. So are you, or a daughter. You are a son or daughter of God. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can't change that. So I can say that and have it mean nothing, or I can just sit with that possibility and sit with that truth until I allow it to change me. And that action taken over time regularly became a powerful change for me, brought me the oxygen and the optimism that I needed. So just acknowledging who I was was just a beginning. I've created a whole document, and I'm not going to go over that here, but I'll give you the book. The book is Living with Purpose and Power. Living with Purpose and Power. There's a very specific, clear process to create optimism, to understand who you are, and to get really connected with that. Get on Amazon, Living with Purpose and Power. You know why? It is so worth it. When you get up and realize that you're the only you, you're the best you, you matter, and there are people that are just dying to meet you, it changes your perspective, and it does it every single day, not once in a while, not in some fake, hypey way. The next thing I want to talk about that really brings you optimism is to choose to practice gratitude. Now, you've heard lots of people talk about that. Gratitude is one of the highest vibrating emotions, if you want to use the vibrational sort of thing. It's right up there with creativity and compassion and kindness and love. 
way up at the top of the human emotion spectrum. So what is gratitude? Well, I was introduced to, and when I started my personal development journey in earnest in 2007, I was introduced to gratitude with the phrase, a rampage of appreciation. And that was to take, you know, five minutes and list as many things as you possibly can that you're grateful for. And of course, the temptation is to be silly, you know, for the lawn and for the shoe that fits okay. And for the knife that I eat my, cut, buttered my bread with and and then also some real things, my partner and my business and the clients that I have and the fact that I can breathe and so forth. But the practice was to do it as fast as you could, as many as you could. I found that to be uh, useful, but it had real limitations. So let me give you another gratitude practice that will change your life. You have had situations where you were absolutely grateful, where something happened that just made you almost weak, a wash with an emotion of gratitude, or something didn't happen. You expected some bad thing to happen and it didn't. And you experience a visceral and physical response of just oh, relief and gratitude at the same time. So you know what that feels like. And I'll tell you how to create it. Pick something that you're grateful for. For me, a real easy one is my precious angel wife, Joy who saved my soul, saved my life, and the story is amazing and so forth, but not for today. What I do is I think about her. I think about her face. I think about her voice. I think about the things that she has done with me and for me. I think about how she shows up in my life every day, and she's consistent and just you know, I just think about them and I stay thinking about them. I don't just pass over it once. Okay, done. I stay engaged in the conversation with myself. I bring my mind back again and again and again. And you know what happens after a minute or two? Those sensations of physical gratitude come in the body. I begin to experience that rush of beautiful emotion associated with gratitude. So you can do that. And you may or may not be your partner. You may be grateful for your breath, for the fact that your body can breathe, that that inhalation goes in your lungs and then that oxygen power goes all the way through you, out of your lungs and into your bloodstream and all the way down to your toes and your fingers and into your brain to flood it with ideas and so forth. You might be grateful for your digestive tract that you can eat and be nourished and be healthy and be okay. You might be grateful for clients that you have. Now, and when you're going to do this, do it slow. Slow is the key, not fast. And only pick one or two things and just marinate in them. Now, you can think I'm nuts, okay? I don't care. But I can make you a promise that if you marinate in something you're truly grateful for, it will change your chemistry, it will change your mind, it will change your life, and it will put you right up at the top of the ladder of consciousness, right up there next to love and compassion and creativity and generosity and beauty, right up there next to this beautiful picture behind me right up there in the land of optimism, and you'll be flooded with oxygen and oxytocin and other good things. So optimism is oxygen. I challenge you. I invite you to participate, to give yourself that oxygen. Choose optimism just because you can. Now, I told you earlier, if you are a person who's doing this regularly, I invite you most sincerely to do something. Reach out to me. Because if you've achieved that, then you are also a person who wants to add good to the world, who is busy doing good, serving, helping, lifting, blessing. You are the kind of person I want on the show here. You have overcome whatever your challenges were. Now, if you're on the way there, I also want you. If you've made a choice, regardless of your past challenges, I'm going. I'm going. I want you. I want to feature you. I'd like to have you here. Why? Because I want you to have a larger reach for your story. Your story, my story, it only matters when we share it and we lift and bless others. So I'm inviting you, inviting you to get a hold of me and let's connect. Thank you for being with me today. You're an amazing person. You are a divine being. You can create anything you want. And I say that every episode and I will continue to do that. 
You can create your own optimism. It does not depend on external circumstances. It does not depend on anything outside of you. You have the power to create your life right here, right now. And not just any old life, not just the average mediocre life, not just the I'll barely get by life, but you have the power to create your ultimate life. Open your heart in this time around. Stand. Thank you for listening to today's episode. We hope that you take it deeply into your heart and decide for yourself how you can create anything you desire. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback and topic suggestions. Until tomorrow, this is Your Ultimate Life with host Kellen Flukiger. Stand with your heart in the sky and your feet on the ground.